Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Robert Schiller, the Arthur M. Oaken Professor of Economics, Coles Foundation, and School of Management at Yale University. Professor Schiller has written numerous articles and books about financial markets, behavioral economics, macroeconomics, real estate, statistical methods, and public attitudes, opinions, and moral judgments regarding markets. He is the former vice president of the American Economic Association and former president of the Eastern Economic Association. Professor Schiller's column, Economic View, appears in the New York Times. Today, we'll talk with him about the Squam Lake Report, his latest book collaboration with 14 of the world's leading economists that offers a plan on how to fix our financial system. Welcome, Professor Schiller. Nice to talk to you today, Marilyn. Let's begin with an overview of the book. Tell us about it. Well, we convened uh, all academic finance, financial economics theorists at uh, a remote retreat location in Squam Lake, New Hampshire in 2008 in order to think about what we ought to be saying about the financial crisis and what ought to be done about it. We are economists, theorists, uh, and I th we thought we had a unique perspective. We worked for a couple of years to come out with a book with recommendations about how the very serious crisis ought to be dealt with. Okay, and how did the book come to be written? What's the story behind it? Well, I think uh, particular credit goes to Professor Kenneth French at Dartmouth College, mm -hmm. uh, but this is really not a Dartmouth College uh, enterprise. Ken thought that we should be a group of people and not show any affiliation at all. In fact, I had to pay my own way to this conference, mm -hmm. as did all the others. Uh, it was a... Um, we wanted to emphasize that we represented no political party, no institution at all. It was just us, economists. Who are these economists that worked with you on their report? And are there any commonalities that united and motivated the group? Well, the, the commonality, I think, is that they are all scholars of finance. In fact, we have eight of the nine most recent presidents of the American Finance Association in our group. So, uh, and uh, we have a former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors and a former governor of the Federal Reserve System. So there are people who are, um, who've had a lot of experience and with different perspectives though and different, some of them are free market economists, mm -hmm. some of them are more uh, liberal in their approach. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble agreeing, and so not everything that one might imagine could be done about the crisis is in our report. But we sought common ground and something that, that we think represents uh, academic um, expertise. And what were your group's policy recommendations? Tell us about some of them. Well, uh, the policy recommendations are, have a broad spectrum. And uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and so uh, the uh, Dodd-Frank bill, which came in, uh, was voted in and signed by the president, overlaps substantially with our proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe our, our proposals are a little different and, and, uh, or at least more refined and developed in some dimensions. Uh, and so I think they will provide a, a guide to people who have to implement Dodd-Frank now in the future. Uh, so th the proposals that we have in the report are really based on financial theory, mm -hmm. uh, as updated <laughs> by recent developments. Uh, and they emphasize uh, a couple of principles of, um, of finance that we want to draw out and explain. One of them is that the role of the government has to be, in intervening in financial markets, has to be defined uh, in terms of market failures uh, as economic theory describes them. Mm -hmm. And a very important market failure, which we are concerned about now, is the systemic instability of the whole economy. So a lot of the proposals deal with that. 
we almost saw a collapse of our financial system during this crisis. One bank failing leading to another bank failing, et cetera. Another of our principles is that the regulations that we impose on the financial sector should try to internalize the costs of the correction of any systemic failure mm -hmm. onto the firm. Otherwise, the incentives will be wrong. So we're very focused on providing the right incentives for people who are running financial firms. Okay. Are there any challenges that may hinder the implementation of some of the recommendations? Well, there are certainly many challenges. <laughs> uh, what comes to mind first is just the complexity of implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, the financial system is immensely complex, and it has a lot of uh, hardwired complexity that might have to, you know, it's like changing a computer program. You have to you make one change and then you discover it has all kinds of other effects. So it's difficult. And I think that's why the Dodd-Frank bill, which passed Congress, is so frustratingly vague. It's not that the Congress people who wrote the bill were inadequate. It's because no one can lay out a map for renovating the financial system it from scratch uh, all at once. It's got to be a, a, a process of learning and as we make changes, discovering what all the implications of the changes are. Do you think the report is having an impact? Well, uh, uh, Barney Frank, who's the Frank of Dodd-Frank, told me uh, personally that he uh, has read the report and he thinks that his bill pretty much makes possible almost everything in the report. Not that it, it, not that it puts it into law, you have to understand, the bill has a lot of calls for studies and it creates new agencies who then have the authority to do things, but it doesn't say that they will do those things. For example, in our report, we had a recommendation for something that's called a contingent capital. This is a technical mm -hmm. term in finance. And if you look at the Dodd-Frank, it calls for, well, it calls for a study of these mm -hmm. and it has given the authority to regulators to impose things if they decide that it's a good thing to do. So Dodd-Frank, I think, was wise in not imposing a new idea, but making it possible, giving an authority to implement this idea after further study. That sounds weak, maybe, but I don't think it's weak. I think it's reality, and I think Congress was functioning well in this, uh, with this bill. Will the group of economists be meeting again, do you think? Oh, we're already meeting again, right. Mm. It's, uh, 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 we're thinking ahead to uh, yet more proposals. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing some of your work. My pleasure, Marilyn. For more information about Professor Schiller and his work, please visit our website at yale.edu backslash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. Thanks. <laughs>